please. So uh, thank you very much for the introduction, and thank you for inviting me for, uh, to this event. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Um, so I'm a research scientist at Meta AI. I work specifically for the applied research, and more specifically for AI for customer support. I'm an NLP specialist, and I have a confession. When we, had the, uh, when we saw the talk of Irene, I hope that I'm pronouncing it correctly, I was very jealous because she had very nice uh, visualization. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any, so I warn you. And uh, I must say that when you are an NLP re uh, researcher, you don't usually have very good visualization to show because it's always with text. Whereas if you are in vision, you always have very nice images to show. But I hope that this does not deter you from uh, pursuing a career in NLP because it is a lot of fun. Um, so, I'm going to talk about an ongoing research with uh, some of my collaborators. Uh, the collaboration has been with other researchers in Meta, uh, University of Cambridge, and Sapienza University of Rome. Um, I want to take this opportunity just to kind of draw more attention at why I am here or why we are here. Obviously, we need more diversity uh, in uh, our, and. Uh, thank you. <coughs> And I must say that uh, Meta is quite open to diversity, and they uh, are really supporting it. So if you have any questions about working at Meta or being a researcher in industry, do reach out to me in the break time or in the mentoring session. And by the way, I just want to say that Alan Halovi is one of the top researchers in database, so I was very honored to, talk, to work with him. Um, so I want to talk about database reasoning with text, and what do I mean by that? Imagine a situation when you want to write an essay on the inf influence of women in sports, and maybe you want to consider the question that where women athletes were more influential if their spouse was also an athlete. Just a hypothetical question. Now, you want to basically answer this question, what do you do to answer this question? In a very ideal scenario, you have a database that has all the information about all female or people and athletes and their spouse information. And I assume that we are here computer science kind of specialists. We all know some querying language. So you have the database, you write the query, and the job is done. And it's actually quite very easy. However, in the real world, there is a very big chance that such a database doesn't exist to have everything. And even if it exists, it might not be public or available to you. So what do you do? And the other thing is that imagine that now this essay is not being written by you, is being written by your you know, young sister or your young daughter or your mother who doesn't know SQL or any querying language. What do they have to do to answer these questions? So we might not have um, structured databases to have all of this information, but we all know that the information is out there somewhere. And when I'm saying out there, I mean in internet. We have Wikipedia that most probably has most of the information. Of course, there are some missing information from Wikipedia as well. We have social media, news websites, and even more. Um, but how do you go and query them? I mean, you can't really go and read everything. And you don't even know who are all the people that you're going to do search on. Ideally, we want to be able to query a corpus of unstructured data which I mean text. And also, you want to do your query using natural language, not using a SQL query. But we know that there is already a field uh, called NLP that is concerned with understanding text and extract information from text. Can we use NLP to do uh, database-style queries over text? And actually, there is a task in uh, NLP, which is called question answering, um, and it's basically doing, uh, answering questions. But what kind of questions and what kind of answers are we kind of dealing with or are we able to do in current NLP research? One of the most fundamental and basic uh, question answering tasks that we have is reading comprehension, which is given a paragraph or a passage and a question, either you know the question is not in this passage or if it is in this passage, you just have to identify it. And it's usually an entity, a, a name, a word, or maybe several. And actually, you know, we, we, most of you probably are uh, familiar with transformers, or maybe I can say BERT, who's one of, which is one of the uh, models. Um, 
Transformers are very good in doing the job that I already said. Um, even before them, we could uh, do reading comprehension, but with the rise of Transformers, now they have kind of pushed a state of the art in many NLP fields. Um, they are deep learning models that have self-attention mechanism, and they are very good in processing sequential data, which make them ideal for text, and they are very big, usually millions or billions of parameters. However, there is a limitation to them, and the limitation is that the input data to them cannot be very big, which is a lot of NLP models even in the past, but specifically them because the computational, they need a lot of computational power. Um, so, you know, if, if the, you had a passage and you, know, you have the question, it's not a very difficult job actually to find the answer yourself. Usually that's not the case, we just have a question. Um, let's say that you have a question and you just want to ask it from Wikipedia. In this case, what do we do? We said that it's very easy to pass a passage to a transformer model, but you can't really pass Wikipedia to a transformer model. So in this case, what we do, we try to narrow down our uh, input to uh, first extract the relevant documents from, in, uh, from the Wikipedia, which is a field of its, on its own, which is called information retrieval, where, or search, you have used that in Google, um, and what it does, it finds similarities between queries and the document. It does very coarse reasoning. It cannot really do very fine-grained reasoning. And then, okay, now we can pass this to transformer model, and then we can get our answers. So we see that we can actually ask a question from a big uh, corpora. So what is the problem? Uh, what about the joins? Because joins are very powerful ca capabilities of data sets. There is such a thing called multi-hop question answering or multi-hop open domain question answering, which means that we need reasoning kind of in multiple stages. So here, for instance, the, the question is, what was the former band of the member of Mother Love Bone who died just before the release of Apple? So for this, you need several different passages and you need to join the information and reason over it to find the answer. So what we do here, we have a slightly more complex uh, information retrieval system that can find different reasoning components and then a transformer can go over this and use bits of information and find the answer. So we can do some join, but it's quite a simple join because the answer is just one, one kind of entity. Um, so let's go back and see what are the differences between databases and NLP. Databases are very good in, in scaling to millions of records, and they can also handle complex queries, joins, uh, select, sets, uh, count, mean, max, and uh, so on. However, the structure of the record in the database is predefined through a schema. You can't usually enter data into database um, directly. There should be an app that is connected to the database. Uh, for instance, when you have a um, website and you do registration, you, um, you know, the information goes directly to the uh, table. Um, and then you have to query it using formal uh, language. In NLP, we can read and reason over unstructured, unstructured text. We can query using unstructured text. It can do some join. Can it scale up? So now we introduce the notion of neural databases, which means databases with the capabilities of uh, natural language. So we go back to this question, and we might want to use our information retrieval to help us here. So let's say that we kind of break down the question somehow, and first we filter the information on all women, because as I said, information retrieval models are not very complex. You have to kind of simplify the uh, task. You find some pages. You say, okay, now uh, pages related to athletes, then you narrow down. Born in 20th century is a bit difficult for information retrieval system, but let's say that we could do that. And now probably you want to also retrieve all the male athletes, just so if the spouse of some of the athletes are uh, male. So you have even more data. Can we put it into a transformer model? We can't, and we cannot filter it further. So what should we do in this case? This is the uh, architecture that we propose instead of using information retrieval to give us a flat list of documents, we want the information retrieval to create us uh, sets of reasoning. So we, then we can, those small sets of reasoning could be actually put into a transformer model, and it is enough passages to um, extract information about one single entity. So in this case, uh, 
where there's some, uh, somebody is a female with an athlete in 20, born in the 20th century and also married to uh, an, uh, an athlete. Um, and uh, I'm going to just talk about the components. There is a support set generation where the uh, information retrieval comes in, and the support set generation iteratively generates sets of um, reasoning units. And then for every reasoning unit, which is now small, we can feed it into a transformer. And every set of reasoning, it, it retains just one answer, as if like you're just doing a multi-hop question answering. And at the end, we do aggregation. So if you have a list, you just return all of the names that are not null, because the null are the people who did not meet the criteria. And if you want to do a count, you could just count them, uh, and so on. I can. Um, so, of course, we had to try this architecture on some data, but to be able to actually test the data, for instance, how many people live in, the, I don't know, uh, New York, you can find that data easily, but we have to know this so that whatever our uh, model gives us, we can actually verify it as gold data. Uh, but such a data doesn't exist. However, Wikipedia has some um, kind of um, another sister called Wikidata, which has some of the structured data of the Wikipedia, but the data is not very um, connected. So we used uh, a technique that was used in a paper called CAM, where we uh, train a language model to take the structured data and generate text. So now we have all the corresponding and we can do our, um, I'm just going to pass through this. So we had a kind of, this is a simplified view of the data that we had and type of question and type of answers. And we can see the top line is when we are using a transformer for reasoning, but we have a perfect IR system, which means that all of our reasoning units have every information that they need, and probably they doesn't also have noise. Uh, in that case, you see that as database size grows, the performance is constant. The top bottom, we are using very standard and state-of-the-art uh, information retrieval models from the industry where they just retrieve flat list of documents. And the size of data set is only from 25 to 1,000, uh, small enough to fit into a transformer and big enough not to fit into it. And as you can see, those two are not doing very well, as we can imagine, as the size grows. And our model is the blue line, which does go down, but um, is still better than those ones. So what are the potential applications of a social QA, of a, a neural database? Um, it's definitely not for applications such as finance, which needs really precise um, numbers and um, querying, but we can use it for social QA. For instance, I have a three-year-old daughter, actually her birthday is gonna be next month, and I don't usually have time to meet my friends who have kids. Um, so I want to take this opportunity to invite all of my friends who have kids the same age to kind of socialize with them. But I don't remember actually which of my friends have told me they have kids or what is the age of them. I want to be able to say, you know, give me the list of all my friends who live in London and they have kids between the age of two and five, right? That would be very convenient. Or the other thing is that I always forget the names of kids of my friends. Uh, or sometimes I meet somebody and don't, I don't remember their names. I could, for instance, say, you know, what was the name of the lady that I met in uh, Zurich in WIDS who works for IBM, for instance? Uh, so that would be very convenient. Where the data would come from, maybe we could allow applications such as email and messaging to have access to our data, or maybe you will have a visual assistant such as Alexa that you can talk to. For instance, you can say, oh, today I met my friend. She has a baby who is you know, two months old, and then later you could uh, query it. Um, other applications could be like for fact-checking in social media data. You want to see like all the trending memes or misinformation, you know, give me all of the um, posts that are about Trumps and it has a photo of something. Or for search, for instance, you know, find me all the posts where my friends are proposing. Um, so what's the challenges and future work? The challenge is scaling up still. Um, so the, the architect that we propose, it does make sense to kind of parallelize the reasoning and have smaller uh, units of reasoning, but the bottleneck is information retrieval. So we want to be able to really scale up to real data, uh, to real world kind of scale, and also we want to work with um, real data, because the data that we have was kind of uh, artificially created. Um, and also the vision is that to extend neural databases to other modalities, so you can uh, query over not just text, but also the data in the table, 
in images, in video, and uh, etc. Uh, that's it for my talk. Uh, I'm almost on time. Um, I'd be happy if I, if you, you want to have any questions. <laughs>